I recently made a video about Newton interpolation. This is a method for approximating a function by generating a polynomial which is equal to the function at a number of x values x0 to xn. While doing the research for the video, I came across the fact that as the x values all tend towards the smallest one, x0, the Newton polynomial tends towards the Taylor polynomial of the same order about x0. A strong hint for this can be found by looking at the coefficient of x, the so-called first order divided difference, f of x1 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0. Anyone who studied calculus might recognise this as the gradient of the straight line which goes through the curve of f of x at x0 and x1. You might also notice that as we let x1 tends to x0, this divided difference tends to the derivative of f at x0, giving us a nice clue to the link between the Newton interpolation method and the Taylor series. Newton certainly would have recognised this, so the natural question would be, why didn't Newton discover Taylor series? So Taylor series approximates a function close to a point x0. The formula relies on successive derivatives of the function, which are divided by successive factorials. A legitimate discovery of Taylor series would require not only figuring out the formula itself, but also recognising the potentially infinite number of terms it can have. Newton published his interpolation method in 1675, which would have given him 40 years to discover Taylor's method for himself. Brooke Taylor, having published what we now know as Taylor series in his book Method of Increments in 1715. We'll be getting back to Newton shortly, but in the meantime, we really need to talk about James Gregory and the Gregory-Newton interpolation formula. Before Newton's general formula, Gregory discovered an interpolation formula for the case where the x values were all equally spaced and separated by a difference h. In this version, we can clearly see the resemblance to the Taylor series, including the appearance of the successive factorials. But the main reason I wanted to introduce Gregory is because there's clear evidence he also discovered Taylor series independently. Digging through Gregory's unpublished work in 1939, H.W. Turnbull gathered evidence that Gregory was calculating Taylor series. As early as 1671, Gregory had sent a letter to John Collins where he described power series expansions for a number of functions about zero, what we would often call nowadays Maclaurin series. Now, on its own, this isn't proof he knew the general formula for any given function, but Turnbull went further. Turnbull went through Gregory's notes meticulously, demonstrating that Gregory was producing calculations exactly as if he was using Taylor series. He even showed how an error in Gregory's power series expansion of tan theta had come from him accidentally writing 27 instead of 272 in the calculations involving the 6th and 7th order derivatives. If Gregory wasn't using Taylor series, in Turnbull's own words, how are we to account for the existence of this solitary error in two distinct contexts? So, if Gregory did indeed discover Taylor series, why didn't he publish his work and take the credit? Well, it turns out he seems to have thought that Newton had already known of the method. In the same letter to Collins in which he writes the series, he says that he used Mr. Newton's universal method. Rather than setting the record straight, Newton makes things worse. He confirms in a letter to Oldenburg that Gregory did indeed rediscover Newton's own method from a series given to him from Collins. It's not clear, at least to me, what method Newton had in mind, but unfortunately, by this time, Gregory had already passed away. Let's move on to Newton's own discovery of the Taylor series. Fagenbaum writes, by the winter of 1691 to 1692, Newton had discovered the precise analytical connection between the coefficients of a power series representing a variable y and the successive fluxions of y, fluxions being what Newton called derivatives. Unlike Gregory, Newton wrote detailed accounts of the method for obtaining power series expansions using successive differentiation, 
But according to Derek Whiteside, who'd collected unpublished work of Newton, the portion of the draft manuscript containing the important result never left Newton's hands. In this unpublished manuscript, Newton starts with the premise that a function can be equated to an unterminated converging series. From this, he gives a number of results, specifically corollary 3, which describes the method of finding the coefficients of a power series expansion about zero, and corollary 4, which gives a power series expansion about w. In modern notation, corollary 3 describes the Maclaurin series and corollary 4 describes the Taylor series about W. The method Newton uses to arrive at these results is to assume the underlying function can be equated to an infinite series, then uses repeated differentiation to calculate the coefficients. This is often nowadays called the method of undetermined coefficients. We start by setting x equals W, which removes all the coefficients apart from a0, and this shows that a0 is equal to f of w. Next, we take the first derivative and again set x equals w to get a1. To get the other coefficients just involves repeating the same procedure with higher and higher derivatives. I wanted to mention that when Taylor discovered his series over 20 years later, his idea was motivated by the Gregory-Newton interpolation formula and its limit as h tends to zero. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.